Right, welcome back folks. Um, this one is a request um, uh, and it's my go-to uh, lure for Gratham through the autumn and the winter. Um, it's the olive snake. Um, there's no secret, I use this a lot. A lot of people use this on uh, Gratham. Very, very popular fly and this is my take on it. Um, so, uh, hook and this is the one that's going to do the damage on the back of the fly here and that's a uh, b175 size 8 a nice big strong hook that one um right let's get time straight away let's not waste any time with this so this is uh, an olive um utc 140 um, let's just start by getting that on the hook so most people are familiar with snakes you've got two hooks in them uh, joined together by a length of braid and the way I do this is slightly different from other people. Um, courses for courses, each of their own. So this is going to be your back hook here. This is the one that the fish are going to see. This is the one that's going to do the damage. Uh, olive uh, rabbit fur. Uh, uh, all sorts of different shades and colours. And again, everybody has their preferences. Uh, I don't think it makes an awful lot of difference. So what we're going to do is just going to offer this up to the hook. And I want this just over the back of the hook there to... To be where it finishes so somewhere about there i'm going to palm that feather there the uh the fur and just wet it a little bit just to give us a nice parting like that and that's nice and easy then and then i'm just going to pop that there and i'm going to tie it in okay so that's there that's in that's done okay nice and bound and nice and tight and then just bring that thread back up just pine the eye like so and again I want to catch this in up here as well so just find the offer it up to where that back where that hook is just wet it again and then just over the top of your thread bind it in nice and tight Lovely. Always wet the fur. It's just easier to work with then. Gives you a nice easy part to work with then. So a good few turns out and then we're just going to finish off in front of the hook like so. Finish it. Now this is the bit where you want to this one get a little bit more lighting on here. It's just not playing. That's better. A little bit more light there for you. Okay, so that's that tied in. That's the back of the hook. That's the bit that's going to do the damage. All right. Now onto this one, a bit of braid. A lot of people whip the braid in along the hook shank there. Uh, no harm in that, it's fine if you like it that way, that's fine. But the way I like to do it, I actually like to tie it in at the top of the, into the eye of the hook. I find it to be just as neat, just as tidy, you know, just as bomb proof. Okay, these uh, flies get under a lot of pressure when the fish get over these, um, when they're attaching with a bit of braid. So there we are, there's a bit of back in there, a bit of braid there. Um, it's about £20, I think, something like that. So I'm just going to pop that through the eye of the hook, like so. I'm going to tie it in and uh, just use a half grinner knot just to tie it in. Use a tuck blood knot, whatever you like. But this is a nice simple way of tying these flies. Just like that. Pull it tight. Bang. Nice and tight one to there. Trim off your waist. Like so. And that's going nowhere. Okay. But just to make sure, I'll turn it upside down. Be super glue. And we're going to give that a little dab of super glue along there. And that's just bring everything together. And then a little dab of super glue on the knot as well. And that just tough. That's absolutely bomb proof now. That is going nowhere. Just like that. Okay. Job done. Right. Front hook. Just put that in the vise. Just put that aside for a second. Get the front hook. 
another size eight but this is a cheap old hook this one because what we're going to do is we're actually going to snap the hook off of it so no point using your expensive hooks for this it's a nice cheap one uh, this particular pattern has got a set of eyes on it so the first thing I'm going to do is put the eyes on it so just whip him behind the head there uh, and up with your chain eyes and just pop them on just behind the head there nice figure of eight turns just to lock them in perfect smashing and then you're going to bring your thread down to the back of the hook okay like so now we want to bring this second part of the fly in so this is the bit where i do things a little bit differently as most people whip this in what i like to do to give this double security is this is my braid that's attached to my um uh, my back hook here my rear hook the bit that we've just done there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the other end of that braid just thread it through the eye of the hook here like so i can get a nice clean finish to it just thread it through the eye of the hook here like that judge my length that i want my snake to be okay so i think there's my back hook there okay i think i want that snake to be somewhere about that sort of distance there so it's a three and a half to four inches and then all i do here is i'll bring that back and i'll bind this down and this really is going to lock everything in there's no way in a million years that this is going to come free come loose or slip and then i just hold the two pieces together and come up here and i just whip it all in nice and tight all the way back up the hook like so and that is absolutely 100 percent bomb proof going nowhere so say these flies could be under quite a lot of pressure when the fish gets hold of that and the back hook there and it's pulling 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 all the pressures on here and as long as this is whipped in nice and tight then that's going to do the job for you so once we've done that again with your super glue and just have a glue on there and that just makes certain that that is going nowhere okay and it is it's not going to move that's not going to move now we've now got to judge and i like this braid to be not taut but fairly fairly tight so it doesn't spin too much in the car so i've now got to offer the braid up make sure your braid is nice and uh fairly tall but not tight like so just part the fur I think it's gonna be somewhere around about there just wet your fingers part the fur and then just catch that catch that in now so i've parted that i've got myself a mark there okay and i'm just going to catch that in just there like so bring that back up so we just bring that forward up to there and we're ready to tie this in just behind the head like so so just again part the fly give yourself a little bit so it comes over the top of the eye like that and then just hold that down and bring that thread up and just catch that in just behind the eye nice and tight just like that a couple more turns and then we can get rid of the excess now and cut this off smashing so just tidy that up a little bit not too worried about that too much because we're going to put a little bit of dubbing around the back of that just to tidy that bit up there now what i like to put on these as well is a little bit of flash okay a little bit of flash underneath the flight just runs along the trails underneath the fly um, and it adds the attraction of the pattern for that uh, i've got a little bit of this stuff this is just a mixed 
sparkle wing and I'm just going to pick out not tons I'm just going to pick out maybe a dozen or so little small pinch like that and I'm going to offer it up to the hook and I want that to go about the length of the fly or just short of the length of the fly okay so I'm just going to cut that off there I'm just going to tie that in So a little bit of extra, just going to tie that in, pull that through, just like so. Lovely, it's just tied in underneath there. Little drop super glue again. Just there, turn that round, back it up as well. Little drop of super glue there, just between the eyes. And bring that up. Couple more turns of the thread, and then we're just going to add a little bit of dubbing on there just to tidy everything up. And we're really on nearly there where it is pattern. So, a little bit of sparkle dubbing. Okay, I'm just going to add that on. This fly looks incredible in the water once it gets going. So, there we are. A few turns of the sparkle dubbing. And then we just can bring that thread forward and finish off just in front of the eye there. Trim that off. Let's buy it out of the way. A little bit of glue. Lovely. Then we give that bit of dubbing a bit of a brush out. That's all done. Let's just change it to focus a little bit for you. There we go. And there you have your olive snake. Once that's all dried, just click this top hook, top hook off there. Uh, always fishing with the single hooks. Um, just my preference. Uh, a lot less tangle ups when you're casting, to be honest with you. Um, a lot less hassles and um, nine out of ten times when these fish take these flies we'll say nine out of ten times that isn't always completely true but the trick with these flies is just get fish that are just nipping at the tail here they're coming along they're swimming along and they're just nipping at the tail here. nip 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 and then they find it bang they got the hook in them uh, before it's too late you do get times when these fish come in and take them from the side and that's frustrating as hell and i suppose having the second hook in there might give you the old bonus fish up or two but generally i'll clip that top hook off of there because it'll just drive you nuts with tangle ups in the uh, uh in the casting so again i hope you like that video this really is one of my favorite graph and patterns for the uh the autumn and the winter especially when on a perch fry um click subscribe click like and uh we'll see what the next video brings thanks very much for watching